Oh boy. <laughs> Where do we start with this one? I'll I'll, I'll let you uh I, I'll I'll let you set it off, you know. I'll let you start it off because there's a, a there's a lot to unpack people. There's a lot to unpack for Scream 3. Um, yeah, I'll let you... You, you can... I, mean, you can uh, I, I do not like this movie. I do not, not what? like this movie. You don't, you I don't do say. I do not like this movie. I, I, I don't want to say I despise this movie, but I fucking despise this movie. Um, and I think part of it, too, is because um, even when I, when I saw this opening... Uh, in the theater, I remember just not feeling the same intensity walking out of the theater. There was just no, I, I didn't feel it. You know what I mean? Just it just uh -huh. felt dull for some reason. Um, and, but after doing research, like much later on, especially when I did the scream uh, retrospect, uh, the retrospect re retrospective yeah. on Bump of the Night, mm -hmm. and Seeing what Williamson had originally planned and heard what he had originally planned would have Crazy. been fucking fire. Crazy. They had to change a lot of shit that they were originally going to shoot for that movie. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh my God. And then I saw the following and I was like, this is screen three. This is screen three. Right here. The following. Uh, that, that the TV didn't... show? Yeah. I've never seen that either. I feel like I'm missing out. I heard of it. I, uh, I just never, never watched it. Was that on Fox? Or yeah, that shit? was on Fox on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Yeah. Um, I remember and the I, advertising. That first, first, first. It is so good, man. It's just like on just on your edge television, man. It's so good. And just seeing that play out, I was like, God damn, we could have gotten that. But Columbine had happened. The media is all turning into like horror and video games and music and they're blaming everyone which makes so much sense when you think about mickey's motive and his motivation and it just makes carried on so much sense thing. for them to do that um mm -hmm. and then the, the opening i rewatched screen three and the opening is not intense it's it's not it, it that's it's that's one thing i definitely agree with the opening is like while i got gripes to screen two the opening for screen two is 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 way better they didn't really they didn't really up the ante. I feel like they wanted to raise the stakes and be like, oh, shit, Cotton's the first kill. But you don't really, you don't, like, There's nothing like there. you said, you don't get that that same, uh, I, I, I get what you're saying as far as the opening goes. I mean, I wanted yeah, it to be, uh, I wanted it to be intense, but it was like, all right. I mean, I was sad to see Cotton go. When you think about uh, the length of the other ones, this is like five minutes as opposed to like 10 minutes or 15 or 12 minutes. You know what I mean? That theater scene alone is 10 minutes. The opening to Scream is about like 13 minutes. This is about five minutes, and it is yeah. not intense, and Ghostface does not play with Cotton. There's not a cat, a cat and mouse game in the mansion, which they should have been. It's like, guess what room I'm in? Guess this there's, and that. And you have cell like, phones. There's a little bit more. Like, I think there's like an extended or alternate opening on the DVD, there's a there's a little bit more. Um, like Cotton, he he breaks the skylight window and he tries to climb out the skylight, and Ghostface stabs him in the leg and, and drags him back down. It's not too too much, but it's I don't know if it would have made a difference for everybody if um if they would have kept it in there. But I definitely like as far as the opening, I definitely see uh I, I definitely see your complaints about that. Um, the opening. And I don't know the the chick that played his girlfriend, Kelly brother. She, I don't know what it was about that chick, but I'm like, okay, Cotton, you 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 did very well for yourself in your later years. And I did like that. Um, it it didn't make it scary, but it made it kind of creepy that Ghostface just randomly turned on Creed, and they're playing that What If song. That's probably the only song by Creed that I that I can listen to often. But um, I can tell you I can tell I can tell you right now that Creed was not happy about that. They weren't? Because they're like a really they're, they're a Christian band. They don't want their music associated with horror movies. They did a fucking video 
also with David Arquette and, and Ghostface in like back in the day, like when they did that that music. Oh, video that's, right, that's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. That's right. That's right. And bad, David bad. Arquette was running. Around yeah, like yeah, that's right. I, I can't. Sometimes I can't get past the Christian thing, and I'm like, oh man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just can't get past that sometimes. They probably. Um, backtrack and then when they saw like people weren't really responding well to Scream 3 they probably were like yeah we shouldn't have let them lose that song I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, and then also the reveal with Roman I just I didn't like that either uh, you know I said this also because I was on another podcast earlier today and we're talking about trilogies and often your third movie has to mirror your first movie in mm. some way shape or form you have to repeat certain themes and certain events in your third movie to actually have a really good book in and send off your characters into the sunset. I don't feel this movie does that. It doesn't. Because then you add this character that by all, all intents and purposes, I guess could not exist, I guess. The brother? He, I'm like, I, the, I don't he's buy the Corey it. You know, he's I, the Corey Cunningham of the Spring franchise. Yeah, you didn't, see, I, I, you didn't see a stitch of them in the other two movies. Yeah, or I mean, I get it, like dirty little secrets and and all that, but I, I don't feel that was executed, and nor was it explained very well. Because this is also this also this movie bears off course of what Williamson was trying to talk about about the entertainment industry and the influence of violence. This movie doesn't do that. But this, what this movie does do, when you look at it from a retrospect in the Me Too movement, the Speaking Out movement, this movie has a lot to say about Hollywood casting culture. You know what I mean? Like, mm. this movie really was ahead of its time talking about backroom castings. Like, it, that's like, a, that's that's a good fucking movie. point you just made, yo. That is a great fucking point. And I, ne I never even looked at it like that because that made me think of um the scene where Lance had Henriksen is kind of like telling all, you know, to, um, mm -hmm. to, to, to Gail, Dewey, and Jennifer, where he's just like, listen, I'm saying things got out of hand, and, you know, she was a bit player in one of my movies, and nothing happened to that girl that she didn't want to happen. That is, it, it is way ahead of its time, because that type of shit is way more relevant today than it, than it ever has been. But the, yeah. like, the movie and definitely went through some, like, it went through a lot of fucking rewrites. Like, Aaron Kruger, um, Funny enough, that motherfucker's last name is Kruger, and Wes Craven directed it. But Aaron Kruger did um, like a lot of the rewrites. Aaron Kruger's credited when it says screenplay. I think Kevin Williamson's name is definitely in there. But when they needed That's like rewrites and punching up, yeah, there you I go. think it's a story credit. But uh, when he wrote Scream Two, he actually sent in an outline of what Scream Three was going to be, right. but. They disregarded that because of Columbine. And they're like, no, we can't have that. Which is what they were doing in Screen 5, which we'll, we'll get soon. And they kind of go there. But And we all, and me and Elisa often theorize that this movie was kind of a shot at Weinstein also. We feel like this movie was kind of a shot at him. And they're like, we're, you know, because everyone was saying, like, oh, it was an open secret that Weinstein was doing this. Even if you watch that documentary, he's like, oh, yeah, we all knew. We just didn't say anything. And, and me and Lisa theorized that, you know, this is probably a, a shot at them because this was a Weinstein movie. And the guy, Lance Hendrickson, is kind of playing a Harvey Weinstein. That's meta for real, bro. Like, yo, if they, wait, what documentary is this? Untouchable. It's on Hulu. Touchable? Yes. And they're talking about that wine that 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 Weinstein shit? Yeah, well you're, oh, you're, the whole Lord. movie is about Harvey Weinstein and how no one was able to touch him because they're like no one wanted to, to cross him because he ruined Mir Servino's uh, career and and he ruined another person he ruined a couple of other uh, careers. Rose McGowan also Oh, she's very vocal about um, the shit that was going on. And it's crazy because, god damn, man, like, what was she going through? Because Rose McGowan's in plenty of Dimension films. She's in Scream. She's in Phantom. She's in fucking, uh, years later, she's in Planet Terror. She's in a bunch of those movies, man. But it's like, whoo. Yeah, she even called out Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino because apparently um, the Tarantino monologue uh, in the elevator uh, yeah. was something that actually happened to her. Oh my God! Tarantino, that Weinstein actually man, did man. to her, and so 
something it's, about Tarantino, man. I like the guy, but there's just something about him. Like, if it ever came to light, I would just be like, I fucking knew it. I knew it. Yeah, so I was like, oh, shit. And I'm like, holy shit, man. That's, that's, that's fucked. And, and that's, that's, to me, like, I appreciate this movie because of what it, it's saying. You know what I mean? Like, there, this movie is saying something about Hollywood culture. And mm-hmm. it doesn't shy away from that. But I do feel that it veers off course from the other two movies where the point of the, well, the, point of the first two movies was about commentary on the entertainment industry and whether or not it influences violence in young kids or not. And I feel like that was, that's my biggest gripe with this movie. But in retrospect, I can look at this movie and say, this is a movie that's ahead of its time. Because it's talking, it's, it's the Me Too movie. It's the Me Too movie. Yeah. This is yep. a slasher form. Um, well, with, with everything that you said, I, I, don't get me wrong, I understand the gripes. You make really solid fucking points, but while I go back and forth with this and Scream 5, Scream 3 is the best sequel in the series for me. Like, I don't, I know what it is, but there are times where I'm like, this is the one that I probably, next to the first one, enjoy watching the most. Scream 3, I got to make a Another comparison here to another Wes Craven property. Scream 3 did what Freddy's Dead did. And everybody hated Freddy's Dead for it. Everybody hates Scream 3 for it. I appreciate Scream 3 because they put a stamp on what the series originally kind of started as. The script was fucking called Scary Movie before it was Mm -hmm. called Scream. That's why Scary Movie's called scary movie but the script was originally for the first one it was a this was a satire like it just so happens that a lot of people were scared by the shit that was in scream i don't think scream was ever purposely written to be like terrifying or scary it was a murder mystery and it was self-aware but a lot of the shit is 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 meant for humor's sake you know like especially the fact that it's it's, it's poking fun at other movies and it's speaking directly to the audience scream three finally took that shit and ran with it. The fact that this started off as a satire, and I know a lot of people don't like all the humor that's in Scream 3. I think oh, that I shit... Love the humor in Scream 3. What, the humor? What better, what better to, th- than to, like, what movie better than to inject the humor and then Scream 3 when you're in Hollywood? Like, this is the time, and I, I made the, um, the Freddy's Dead reference because a lot of people hate Freddy's Dead, but Freddy's Dead, Rachel Talalay put the stamp on the fact that this is who, who Freddy has been, like roughly, arguably since Dream Warriors, but for sure since Dream Master. Like since Dream Master, Freddy is a, a stand-up fucking comedian. We can't take it seriously anymore. Nightmare Five kind of dropped the ball because they tried to go to this dark gothic tone and they tried to make it serious again. No, crack these jokes. Let's get silly. We can't take you seriously anymore. And fucking Freddy's dead really put the stamp on that shit and ran with the idea. Like, they let it be known. This is what the series has become. Let's capitalize on that. Like, I, I feel like Scream 3 did the same thing. Dead because there's no Alice and there's no Jacob. That's the only reason I hate that movie. <laughs> they should have. That's the direct sequel we need. Like, if we ever get a direct sequel to Freddy, fuck all the le- Heather Lane. And I'm not saying fuck Heather Lane Camp. I love Heather Lane Camp. Nancy's no. one of the best final girls no, ever. Like, Nancy Thompson's like, yeah, I mean, she had her time, but like, let Alice. Exactly. You know, Yep. I would love yep. to see Alice and Jacob. Uh, I mean, their story could still continue. Like, there was more to there was there's more to that story. You know what I mean? There's Heather, more Heather Lane to Cam it. got three movies. Lisa Wilcox needs three movies. Yeah, I, I feel like Lisa Wilcox definitely needs her her legacy sequel. She deserves three movies, just like um, Jamie Lee. you know, Heather Lane Camp got three movies. Yeah. Um, but like. Like, I agree what you said about Scream 3. Like, the opening, it's not all that strong. It's really not. Uh, I guess that they started it off with Cotton Weary because they wanted everybody to know, yo, we're not fucking around this time, man. You remember we killed Randy? We're killing Cotton in the first scene, and everybody's kind of like, so? Who gives a fuck? Like, 
Like nobody, nobody really gives a fuck. Like it was, it was, it was kind of sad to see. Like I like Cotton Weary's character, but then it, like his death kind of it didn't linger for me. It came and went. Even when Kincaid tells Gail, like you know, Cotton Weary's been murdered and his girlfriend is just like, all right. But um, see you. Listen, see you. The kind of those tells it. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> she's like somebody killed Cotton. He's like, yeah, and his girlfriend. But listen to this here though. Like we kept getting pictures and shit. Like they just keep they skip right past that shit. But um. Scream 3 also has two of the best fucking characters in the franchise. One, Tyson doesn't get a lot to do. But I, when I went back that, to watch Scream... Um, is that Daryl... Is that Daryl Chill Mitchell? Deion Richmond. De- uh, from from oh. Hatchet. Yeah, from, uh, yeah, from, so cool. from Hatchet. He's, he's the dude from Hatchet. Um, and he gets a rotten deal in every horror movie he's in. But I like that he's comic relief. But Tyson, like, like he is... His reactions are black reactions. Like when he first sees Ghostface and he screams, Oh shit, like that's a better oh shit than when Julian saw Michael Myers pop out of the closet in Halloween 2018. Because it fits. It fits in something that like the humor you expected. But mm-hmm. his his death sequence, like I it's another one of those death sequences where when he gets thrown, first of all, Ghostface just keeps fucking him up. He stabs him in the stomach, he chases him, literally pulls the rug from under him and throws him into the glass window and then throws him off the, the balcony. And I, like, when they show his dead body, I'm like, wait, is, he's going to wake up soon, right? Like, he's going to be all right. I did not want him to die. The other character that I love, and I know a lot of people hate her, a lot of people have compared her to, like, Tina from Halloween 5, Parker Posey as Jennifer is fucking comedic gold. I love who Parker hates, Posey. Who hates Parker? Paul Posey, I, listen, the there's a lot. A lot of pe- there's a lot of people that call her annoying, say that she's the worst character. I love, she is the annoying little sister to Gail Weathers that Gail Weathers never wanted, but she's kind of stuck with her because she's a lot more useful in Hollywood than Gail Weathers is. And I love that, that fucking dysfunctional dynamic between the two of them. Like, the, the cast is underrated in that movie overall, man. Like, it, I, like it, Jenny it, McCarthy. It really is. It really is. Jenny McCarthy, man. Jenny McCarthy was in her prime in that one. I think that was before Jim Carrey got a hold of her, but it was sad to see her go just because I liked watching her on MTV. Yeah, I had to I had to put their business out on Front Street. A lot of people didn't know that that Jim Carrey was yeah, good for him. Good for him, man. Uh, but um and Patrick Dempsey is a solid he's a solid detective. Sometimes he comes off as creepy and like a little bit clingy, but I like like his intensity. Like, I like the moments where he's, t- he's going back and forth with Dewey and he's like, you know, you want to have this conversation with a polygraph and shit like that. And Lance Henriksen, that's a cat. That was one of the biggest cast in steals at that point. Like, three movies mm-hmm. in and you get Lance Henriksen, they didn't give him too much to do, but I loved him in that movie. Like, given, you know, his character was a fucking dickhead. Like, he was definitely an ain't shit character, but casting wise, that was smart as shit to cast, um, like Lance Henriksen, he's hard royalty anyway. So that was dumb. yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of things like going for. I don't know. And another thing, like real quick, uh, Scream Three arguably has one of the best sequences in the entire fucking franchise. When Ghostface, like that mansion shit, when people are popping up out of trap oh, yeah. doors and secret passageways, when Ghostface shows up, he's getting busy. He punches the shit out of Dewey. He attacks Tyson. He attacks Gail. Gail throws a, a vase at him. He's everywhere. That's one thing I can give. While Roman, he's very whiny. He comes across as whiny as shit when Another he reveals character, himself at some point. Mind you, that disappears midway through the movie. Yup. And that was another thing. I, I kind of called it, but I was like, all right, let's wait and see. Because in, in, Scream, in the Scream series, we never find dead bodies. We don't find dead bodies. We see on-screen deaths. It's not Friday the 13th. It's not Halloween where you just find somebody dead. And all of a sudden, Gail opens up the casket, and Roman's in there. She checks his pulse, and he's dead. I was like, when I first watched it, I'm like, I don't know. We've never done that before. So I'm going to keep that in mind. But I did like when he popped up, I was like, all right, cool. But his explanation, he starts whining. like He starts to sound like Jill from part four. He's whining and he's bitching about the mother and the family that that you had that should have been mine and all that other shit. And Roman's a game changer. Roman is the first ghost face with the voice changer. 
with the bulletproof vest. He's got yeah. extra knives in his in his sleeve and shit like that. He 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 broke some ground and he plays dirty. He killed fucking Patrick Warburton with a with a, a skillet. A skillet. Yeah. He killed him with a fucking well, okay. he stabbed he him in the back, out. but yeah, he beat the fuck out of him with a skillet. An iron skillet. Um I just don't like that ending. And I also don't like the fact that uh, all of a sudden we go supernatural with uh, Maureen Prescott. Like, I don't like that. Like, uh, oh, she sees yeah. her mom, yeah. her mom outside the window. Like, to me, that also kind of just, like, veers off course. Like, oh, are you trying to jump the shark? Are you teasing you're going to jump the shark right now? Because that part right there kind of ruins it, honestly. I'm I'm wondering... Do people still feel the same? Did people still feel the same way about that when they saw Billy Loomis in Scream? I thought the same way. I thought the same way. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was dumb. Oh, critics, man! I, God damn! Because I mean, you you base this series that's supposed to be grounded, and then you try to go supernatural, but then you disguise the supernatural in Scream Five with mental health. She's bipolar she might be schizophrenic it, she's you know hallucinating like oh, that's, that's how you that's right because he, yeah. he he tells her he was like psych meds aren't working or some shit yeah. he says when she's looking yeah. in the mirror so yeah she is on fucking meds another reason why i'm going out on a limb um sam might be the killer in scream six somebody you? said what if they what no go ahead, go ahead. finish your talk uh, oh no, I was just about to say real quick. Somebody, somebody on on TikTok commented on my post and was like, "What if they go the high tension route?" And you know exactly what I'm talking about. He didn't want to spoil the twist for anybody. I know. And I was like, "I think if it, like, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead." Okay, I'm an avid defender for that movie. I'm okay. an avid defender, and I defend that twist. I defend that twist because it is earned. The problem. The problem is, is that the beginning of the movie does not explicitly say that that's our female and she is in the hospital and the doctor says, tell me what happened. Because if you watch the movie again and you have closed caption on, it's very faintly and it says, doctor says, so tell me what happened. So the whole thing is, is that it's supposed to be from her point of view. She's narrating the story. She's telling you the story. Think of it. Have you seen The Usual Suspects? I have. Pro only, surprisingly enough, I've only seen it like twice. But I've seen okay. it. Um, and so I, yeah, I remember like... Verbal Kid this, says, this, everything uh, Verbal Kid says is bullshit. It didn't mm -hmm. happen. None of that happened. And that's, the, that's how I use it. Like, she Verbal Kid the, the movie. Like, everything she said was bullshit. It didn't happen. And when we get to the ending, we're getting the other side of it. We're getting the mm. other side of the story. We're getting the actual victim side of the story. We're getting uh, the other person. That's why she says, like, she can't see me, right, on the other side of the mirror. So the last 10, 15 minutes of the movie, we're hearing the other side of that story. It I, is I feel like time, but it's is, not edited very well in the sense where you get that she's being interrogated. High tension, man. I like I've only seen it once and I remember I caved in because everybody was like, What? You never see it? Um I'm, I'm telling you, bro, like maybe after the first act or so, I, I I knew I knew what it was because I'm like, wait, this girl and this killer are have not run into each other. There hasn't been some cat and mouse like great escape. It's usually her hiding from this dude and he can't see any parts of her. I'm like, I already know what this mind fuck is about to be. I know what's up at this point because there there was never a scene where like he didn't even grab her from underneath the bed and she scurries away and gets away. He didn't didn't she hide in his car at some point? Yeah, or she hide thought in his car he hid under the bed. Um she was basically in the bathroom in the last stall. Yeah, I'm like, I, I, I said, this just isn't, like, I said, this ain't making sense. And I said, I hope this ain't what I think it is. And it, and it was. And the movie's got some cool-ass kills in it. I won't even lie. It's brutal as shit. And I can see why people love it. It's just that I, I called that 
that twist very early on before they even like established the shit. I don't I don't know. You think they could pull like that type of twist off in Scream Six if they did that with Sam? I don't know. Um, they, I mean, they, they maybe, 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 maybe. I don't know. They probably could. It, it, it has to be earned. It. I. I don't see yeah. how you earn that with with Sam at this point. I, I, I mean, don't see how she did say in the trailer. I don't see how you can earn that. She said in the trailer, "This darkness followed me here," and she is. It's hereditary that our family serial killers, Mrs. Loomis and Billy Loomis, and I. Like, if they go that route. My theory is that, that that shot of Sam in the trailer where she's staring down, like it's daytime out, she's staring down at that bloody ghost face mask in her hand, and then there's a shot of it on the on the street. That's the end. That's the ending, and that might be that, oh, shit, maybe she was the killer type of moment. But like you said, it does have to be earned. They can't just pop up with it's Sam so fucking crazy. She's just killing everybody. And seen all the boys love Maggie Lane. Isn't Amber Heard in that shit? Yeah. <laughs> prior to that shit literally um i've always seen the poster i don't know what it's about uh yeah. i've never watched it. i think it's on um i think it's on tubi if i'm not mistaken um sounds about right. it's a low budget is it, budget is it a slasher movie? movie yeah it's a low budget slasher movie it's one of her first movies that's a really good I, I i like it a lot oh this this is one of her first movies because she did. I think she did Stepfather after this. Yeah, I think it was right, her uh, acting debut. Uh, the movie got shelled for a few years because there were no big stars attached to it. So uh, that's what no? sucks. Wait, who? Josh, Jonathan Levine. I don't know who the fuck he this director is. Did the Wackness? You ever seen the Wackness? No, but ill. He did Warm Bodies. Ugh. Oh. You never oh. seen the blackness with Josh Peck instead of Ben Kingsley, where Josh Peck sells weed in New York and when he's and he's an avid hip hop fan in '94. The whackness. No, I've never seen this. Oh, Bob Kajan's in here. Mm-hmm. Method Man, Aaron Hughes in here, Mary Kate Olsen. Oh, Mary Kate Olsen, fucking Mary, Mary Mary Kate Olsen gives a great performance in that movie. It's what is this like? Uh, drama comedy? Drama. It's a yeah, it's a, a drama comedy. The whackness. No, I've never, I've never seen this. Oh, but this that warm body shit on his resume is rubbing me all the wrong way. That movie's <laughs> fucking awful. God, I've never seen damn it, man. warm bodies. I've, I've never seen warm bodies. You ain't missing shit. You know me, bro. I adore. <laughs> My zombie subgenre, but fuck warm bodies. That movie is a piece of shit. I like Nicholas Holt, man. I do. And I like Rob Corddry, but that movie fucking sucks. And I think it's based off of a book. And everybody's like, well, the book was pretty good. I actually like the twist that they put on it. Fuck that stupid ass, pussy ass twist. You mean to tell me oh. love cures the zombie virus? Kiss me. Listen. Fuck what? Movie, man. What? This bitch. I'm not even going to spoil it for you. I want you to experience that fucking that movie, is, bro. That is awesome. That that's almost as bad as the high tension twist, bro. I shit oh, you not. This bitch, this bitch kisses Nicholas Holt towards the end of the movie. I think like they're about to kill him or something. He's like surrounded. I've only seen this bullshit once, thank God. But something ha- happens where she kisses him. His whole complexion changes from like dead blue and gray to just regular. And love has has cured the zombie apocalypse and everything is okay. He's never eaten anybody in his lifetime. And everybody will live happily ever after. Fuck that movie, man. That shit is ass cheeks. Ass cheeks. Warm bodies is garbage, man. No disrespect to anybody that enjoys that movie to each their own. But that movie fucking sucks. I am so glad that I did not buy the still book last night, then <laughs> Because I was this close to buying it. <laughs> Bro. They had a steel book release of it uh, last last night. You, whatever, whatever you were going to spend on that steel book, if you would have dropped that money on the street, it would have been better off than you buying that fucking movie. Like I, I'm telling you, man, it's bad. And then they've got these other breed of zombies in there called the Bonies, and the Bonies are like 
shitty CG zombies that are like, you know how in Predators they had the, the super vicious Predators that were hunting the other Predators? It was like the Bonies are pretty much that, but they just look like shit. They look worse than the I Am Legend, um, like Zompires that were in there. Man, that movie, I'm telling you, Warm Bodies is fucking garbage. Sucks. It's trash. She God fucking damn. killed me. You kissed Nicholas Holt and he turned human? Like, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Oh, oh my like, god. I, I, watch they watch they watch they do that shit in Renfield. <laughs> <laughs> you are no longer a ghoul. Aquafina cured you by giving you a blowjob. Brit <laughs> Another bridge burn by Johnny Zuko, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, this is what we do. God damn. I right, listen. <laughs> Aquafina is. Does she have like a? Does she have a real name, or is that like on I her think that birth is certificate? Real name. I think that's a real name. I right, listen. Renfield actually. It, it looks like it could be a little bit of fun. A little bit of fun. <laughs> yeah. A little yeah, bit of fun. A little I bit. Mean, a little bit. Nicholas Cage ain't taking shit seriously at this point in his career anyway. So why not just have fun with it? I don't give a shit. If Nicholas Cage don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck either. Um, we got, I, know, I know people. I know we get, get sidetracked, people. This is what we do. This is uh, what the fuck three. we do. So how do you, how do you feel this? How do you feel this is like as a closing for like the trilogy? Like, how do you feel like if uh, this as a closer? Because it's, it's, it's essentially I do feel as like, a closer. I do feel like if this was the last one, it it could have ended a lot stronger, but they do. I don't, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but they, they ended in a way like, are they trying to say that maybe a killer is still out there or are they trying to say that Sydney is so unafraid of everything at this point that she just leaves her front door open because she does. She leaves when he's like, Kincaid's like, come on, we're about to watch a movie. And then he sheds some light on that. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and Sydney just life. looks at the door and then she just kind of walks off. Like I didn't, I didn't really understand what they what they meant like directly, but I've always just assumed a couple things were meant by the end. So of the I mean, commentary on the commentary, uh -huh. I think it's uh, Craven. He says uh -huh. uh, we're giving Sydney the happy life that she you know she ever wants, but then we're kind of playing with the audience by having the door open, but then. She smiles and realizes it's over. And Sydney goes on to have like the life that she can, can finally have. And she right. leaves the door open because she now feels safe. I mean, it's it's uh, uh it, it, if Scream was to be or Scream Three was to be the last movie, it it could have ended stronger. But, but I feel like at that point, like I said, that that sequence when Ghostface pops up and he he catches three bodies back to back. He kills mm -hmm. he kills um Angelina, he kills Tyson, Jennifer. and then he kills and then he kills Jennifer. That sequence alone, like that was something that I feel like they shot for the they swung for the fence and they hit a fucking home run with that sequence. That shit is so entertaining. You never you don't expect pe three people to get killed back to back. So as far as like closing out the series, they gave it one of the best sequences. The reveal like I said, Roman, the reveal is it's okay, um, but he just, just get he just gets a little bit whiny, and I'm not really that big a fan of is what's his name Scott Foley. Scott yeah. Foley's uh, he he's okay, but I think seeing him in in Dawson's Creek already like he was already in the crosshairs on Dawson's Creek because I'm like I don't know what the fuck this dude's doing in here. He's a little bit of an asshole, but um I like it, it finishes all right for um for if it is okay, it's kind of like how I feel about Dark Phoenix. I don't know. I think the last time you said you hadn't seen Dark Phoenix. Oh, wait. Wait. No, you did see Dark Phoenix, right? Yeah, Dark Phoenix was garbage. Okay, yeah. It's kind of like how I feel about Dark Phoenix where it's like I don't hate the movie at all. But as far as the being a proper send-off for these characters, it could have been a hell of a lot better. Um, yeah. But, I, like, but overall, I like how I said made, like, this, this is... I like how I said this is that was garbage. You're like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, that was because, garbage. Because like, dark, dark Phoenix, man, like I just I I wanted I wanted so much more 
I did, man. I wanted so much more, man. I uh, um I I think um I think I lost my train of thought just now. I don't remember what the fuck I was about to say. Um that's all right. All right. So as far as this, what is the best kill in Scream Three? Best kill in Scream Three? Uh <laughs> I go back and forth between Tyson's kill because they drag that out. And even though it's not much, I like Jennifer's death scene because she she's freaking the fuck out. Like she's she's throwing shit in the way when Ghostface is like coming after her. She's trying to like open up doors and then she's banging on that um that yeah, sound weird. that two way glass. And she sees the killer coming and she's just freaking out and then she tells the fucking killer. She said, you can't kill me. I'm the killer in Stab 3. And it, it wasn't until, like, a couple nights ago when I was gearing up for this episode, I realized, like, how much I fucking love her ca- character, man, because right to the very end, she's still a doofus. Like, she's goofy as fuck, and she's still energetic. Even when she's getting stabbed up, she throws, like, this little, this little prissy punch at Ghostface. Like, even in death, she's still, like, being true to her character. But I gotta go... I got to go with Tyson because Tyson, he's screaming for the cops. Like, he, he's screaming for the cops like they can hear him. It's unrealistic, but it's some, some black shit. Like, every reaction he gives, like, even down to when him and Dewey, like, jump scare each other. Tyson's like, he, he jumps up, but he's, I never noticed he's, like, in a fighting stance. Like, he's got his hands up, ready to fight. So Tyson's my, that's my favorite death scene. Uh, scream. Mine would be the house explosion. I actually oh, like that. I like how that's played out. That I think that's probably one of the most like creative sequences in the movie. Honestly, I, yep. I really like that. Mercy mm-hmm. is given to those who smell the gas. Boom. Yeah, oh, and so we good. had we hadn't seen that before. That was a meta moment yeah. too. Like you, you're sending them pages of the script for one of their own deaths. Yeah. Like that shit's yeah. fire. Like literally, pun intended. That shit's fire. <laughs> All yeah. pun intended. Um, I, I think we both agree i think best character is oh uh uh jennifer jennifer i like right jennifer i I love i don't know how like i get it she can be overwhelming but she is she is the ultimate prima donna in in the screen franchise there's never been a character like her ever she's awesome in my opinion she's like the best thing in that movie she's the best thing in that movie (laughs) and that's why for me like it's, it's it's like really it's as watchable for me because of her. Yeah, she's, she's that she's, she's the energy, yo. She's the energy in, in every sequence that she is in. I love I love Parker Posey and everything. Like she is one of the reasons I like Blade Trinity. Like Blade Trinity is not a good movie at all. But her character I love her character in that movie. Like she and she's another reason why I c I wanna go back and watch um Superman Returns. She's like Lex Luthor's like right hand. Oh yeah, Superman Returns. that's right. I totally forgot mm-hmm. about that. She's totally in that shit too, that. man. Um, worst character. Oh, worst character. Um, um, Tom, the one that gets blown up in the house explosion because he just he's insensitive as shit. Like I, I there's a scene where. Angelina's like, you know, I see why David's David, I almost called him David Spelling. What's that motherfucker's name? David Schwimmer and Tori Spelling. I see why they didn't want to come back. And he's like, you know, you basically say like, yeah, people die, but you got to keep praying that production, you know, starts back up. And she's like, yeah, but not at the expense of people's lives. And he's like, oh, cue the violins. And he starts laughing. It's like, man, fuck you. Like this movie, like people are dying. Like that's, that was a real moment right there is people dying, getting murdered based off the shit that, that we're filming. And you just, you don't give a fuck. Like, you want the movie to just keep on going. That's, like, some really selfish shit. And then when he's drunk at the party, he's tearing up pages of the script, and he's like, yeah, this scene and Maureen, Pres- Maureen Prescott's flashback sequence and all that sort of shit. I just, I don't like his character. He's he's a dickhead. He is. Uh, for me, Roman, I just, I fucking, he's just a piece of shit, man. He's a fucking, God, just <laughs> Why is a mommy didn't love me? Oh, she left me at the orphanage. Grow up, fucker. You're in the Hollywood industry. You're a director. 
It wasn't that fucking bad for you, motherfucker. Jesus successful fucking Christ. Director. Yeah, he's like, like yeah, yeah, I want to be successful. He's going to wanna stab back three. Back in my career and just start murdering people. <laughs> Roman. <laughs> for, oh, for Roman. Real. And, and yeah, he is, he is, uh, Roman, like, he, he, he comes off as whiny even in the scenes before he's the killer, like, where he's like, he's like, look what they did. This is a message when he's holding up the, the, the award with the, the head missing. And he's like, this is a message. They're trying to kill my cast and they're trying to kill my film. And it's like, bitch, shut up. Shut yeah. your ass up. Shut the fuck up, man. Seriously. <laughs> Grow a pair or stop making films. That's your only two options, man. For real. Now that we, is advice that we need to give to many of directors out there. I'm not saying no names, Uwe Boll. Oh, Grow oh. a pair or stop directing. Yeah, and stop painting Nerf guns black. We know they're Nerf guns. Stop doing that shit. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we can see the sponges fucking fly, dude. Come on. Let's, let's just, let's just really keep it real, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of movies where he got a couple of Nerf guns and he painted them black and silver. Ooh, that is fucking... Des like I'm all for guerrilla filmmaking, but that is just pure desperation right there. Yeah. Oh, Uve. He just flies it because he says that they're phaser guns and they look futuristic. Oh, I'm like, dog. We you. can clearly see the Nerf symbol on there, dude. Come did on. He, did, he do that? did he do that in Alone in the Dark? Yeah, I've never watched that. Alone all in the Dark. He did that in another. I think he did that in. In a Blood Rain movie, also, and then he did another one in a, in a, po wow. a post apocalyptic movie. So he, he has done that for a few films. Uwe Boll, Crazy. the only movie I'll give him half credit on is Rampage, and that's the closest to a Grand Theft Auto, a Grand Theft Auto movie I've ever seen. Rampage is just is just brutal, start to finish. Well, not start to finish, but you, you've never seen Rampage before. No. I, I, I keep oh, yeah. thinking about The Rock when you say Rampage, but I'm guessing that's not the one you're talking about. This one has got, it's the only movie with Uwe Boll where I'm like, you know what? I could turn my brain off and enjoy this shit because it is simple. This motherfucker, Brandon Fletcher from um, Freddy vs. Jason, the, the guy that was uh, Jason Ritter's best oh, friend. Yeah. He, okay. he plays this guy, just a regular Joe Schmo guy, and he orders all this Teflon. He makes a Teflon suit, gets two fucking assault rifles, and just goes around town murdering everybody. It is literally Grand Theft Auto. He blows up the police station. He has a remote controlled van with barrels of explosives. He blows up the police station in this small town, and after that, he just gets out the car and starts shooting everybody the fuck up. He shoots up people in the coffee shop. He shoots up all the women in the hair salon. He's shooting people through their windshield. He, it, it's literally called Rampage for a reason. It is Grand Theft Auto. Like, you know when you beat all the missions and you just kill motherfuckers in Grand Theft yeah. Auto? That's exactly what he's doing. The only people he doesn't kill are the old people in the bingo hall. But he goes into the bingo hall completely dressed up, helmet on and everything with the guns, and orders a sandwich. And orders a sandwich and a Coke, eats the shit, drinks it, and just walks the fuck out to kill more people. It's, it's, it's fucking crazy. Like, that movie... I was smoking with my friend when I first saw it, and I got paranoid as shit because I'm like, yo, this could really happen. Like, it's not like there aren't mass shootings that happen all the time. This motherfucker just, he couldn't be stopped. When the cops that are left show up and try to, like, fire at him, shit's bouncing right off him. He's got an entire Teflon that, suit. That reminds me of, of uh, the 44 Minutes down in L.A. when the two bank robbers like, took on the whole entire LAPD with assault rifles. When they had the the mass and the Teflon, yeah. you remember that? Listen, it might be loosely based on that shit. What year did that happen? That happened. Uh, I want to say ninety six, ninety five. It happened right around the time Heat came out. Actually, no, it happened <laughs> after Heat oh, because cool. people were saying, "Oh, they were inspired by the scene Heat." <laughs> no, they were just two Russians that wanted to rob banks, and they just got carried away. You, 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 you motherfuckers will do anything to blame the movies out here. Cut it out. Don't blame the movies. For real. It is, those people were crazy from birth. It's a chemical imbalance with those people, man. Stop trying to blame movies and, oh, you gotta, 
like they tried to do that shit a lot back in the 80s. Like they were outside boycotting Silent Night, Deadly Night with picket signs and shit. Like, oh, my child's going to grow up to be a killer. No, he was born that way, bitch. Like, stop it. Just stop it. Just cut it the fuck out. Same thing with Maniac and shit like that. Yeah. Like, holy shit, man. And yeah, man, um, like, stop that nonsense. Cut it out, people. 